Howdy, how's it going? My name's Davy Chappie, and it is time once again to hit that bottle because Wizards of the Coast is throwing us another new Unearthed Arcana, this time tackling new subclasses for the Druid, the Ranger, and most shockingly, a new subclass for the Artificer, thus confirming that even after the Eberron book, the Artificer will still be getting regular updates just like the rest of the classes, which is a huge breath of fresh air because honestly, I didn't know how the Artificer was going to be treated after its release. So, as always, keep in mind that a lot of this is just my opinion as we jump straight into the new subclasses, starting with... Fee fi fo fum I smell the blood of another ad! Little child, do you like puppies? Do you like violence? Do you like smashing puppies over the heads of would-be interlopers and giving your canine a thirst for blood that only goblins can satiate? Well then you need to get a hold of Stibble's Codex of Companions, a brand new tome crafted by our sponsor, Eldermancy, and squeezed full of over 70 new animals of all shapes, sizes, dazzles, and delights. Like the world's most D&D-themed game of Pokemon, you too can go out and collect dozens of quirky, imaginative characters and force them to do battle for your enjoyment and amusement. And that's not all. The book also comes with spells, feats, and companion loyalty mechanics to ensure that each adventure with your buddy is played out exactly how you want it. And you can even use the built-in personality table to bring a little bit of life into your sentient teacup, free of charge. Well, free of charge as long as you buy Stibble's Codex of Companions. Kickstarter link down below. Don't leave your heart sad and sagging. Buy Stibble's Codex Codex of Companions. Starting with the Armorer Artificer. You know how people always compare the antics of the Avengers to a D&D party? Well, someone must have taken that to heart because the Armorer Artificer lets you live out your own dreams of being a genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. When you choose to play as the Armored Avenger, you get proficiency in heavy armor and the ability to turn heavy armor into your own power armor, TM, which acts as a spell focus and also lets you shift into either a tanky form, wherein you get your own thunder punches and a personal shield that regenerates every turn, or a super sneaky infiltrator form that gives you arc reactors and a faster movement speed and it makes it easier to sneak around. As you go up in levels, you gain an extra attack, you get extra artificer infusions so long as they go towards pimping your Iron Man suit, you get a buff to your armor models that lets you grab people from a distance in your tank form or leave a static charge on your enemies for your friends to detonate in your infiltrator form. And finally, the UA comes with new infusions for the artificer that let you use intelligence instead of strength to make checks and saving throws, as well as resist going prone. You can integrate tools into your body, you can get a better version of the alert feat, and you can prevent yourself from losing concentration, and you can even refuel your own spell slots. So I can already tell that this subclass is going to get a lot of flack for being far and away the least fantasy-esque thing that exists within the world, but you know what? I'm gonna go to bat for this thing. If you consider that the Artificer was present in Eberron and therefore belongs in Eberron-type worlds where steampunk and magitech gadgets are much more common, then a suit of power armor a la the Iron Man armor Mark I doesn't seem so strange. Granted, if I hear the metallic clap of an infiltrator's ass cheeks anywhere near the Forgotten Realms or Greyhawk, I'm gonna reach into the playmat and chuck that character out of existence but I can get down with this subclass in a world where that would be more thematically appropriate. As far as abilities go, I think that this subclass is pretty okay balance-wise for the most part. Maybe I'd lower the shield to half the artificer level around it down, or it could just be equal to your intelligence modifier, since wearing heavy armor already means that you're not gonna get hit often, and with infusions, you can really raise that AC to stupid heights. But overall, I don't think it's that egregious. The only ability that I know is going to get really annoying is the scorpion-style get over here that the guardian can do at 15th level, but that's 15th level. By that point, you should be allowed to do stupid shit. As for the infusions, the only one that bothers me is the Mind Sharpener, because it essentially prevents a spellcaster from losing concentration, and that is a big deal, even at the cost of your reaction. It's not that the feature shouldn't exist, it's just that perhaps it should be in a higher level bracket than something that you can get right out the gate. Other than that, you can take solace in knowing that when a big purple silly putty monster wearing a wife beater comes on to take your whole gang, you'll be ready to assemble. Next up, we have the Circle of Stars Druid, a druid that huffed so much of that burning bush that their mind flew up into the clouds and never came down. As a star child, you'll be given a special space map that guides you on your journey, allowing you to cast both Augury and Guiding Bolt for free, and you can use your wild shape to spin around and transform into a literal superstar, shining light and giving you powers based on your choice of three different constellations. The Archer, giving you the power to fire radiant arrows everywhere and officially make the Ranger obsolete. The Dragon, giving you a tighter hold on your concentration spells. And the Chalice, giving you all the powers of a cup, which is to say that you can heal somebody whenever you heal someone else, you know, like a cup does. Beyond your initial features, the Circle of Stars Druid will learn to harness their star power into the embodiment of divination, randomly getting powers of we 
Heal, which adds a d6 to your roll, or Woe, which subtracts a d6. You'll also become resistant to martial damage, and at the height of your power, you can surround your enemies in a star, dealing damage and shooting them away from you. Honestly, I really have nothing bad to say about this subclass at all. Everything looks really well balanced, and the concept just oozes originality. I really feel like the designers had fun creating this thing, because it's just one of those subclasses that feels like it would be fun to play. I super like how Wizards is shifting the druid from a purely earth tone basic concept of a druid into a more broad everything is a part of nature line of thinking. Between this and the fire druid, it's really opening up a new line of thinking for a class that has just been so sandbagged by its own limited flexibility. And finally, the subclass that purely exists to taunt me and me specifically. I know you game Crawford. This is payback for calling you a lobster. The Fey Wanderer Ranger takes a look at all of my videos and decides, hey, you know what we're gonna do today? We're gonna piss off Davy Chappy. <sighs> At least I know I have fans in the company. In any case, when you choose to play your own fey based hunter-killer, your ranger takes on the traits of the courts, changing your appearance, giving you new spells and proficiencies, strengthening your mind against charms and fear effects, and imbuing your weapons with unsealing magic to deal additional psychic damage. Beyond that, you can spend spell slots to increase the psychic damage further, as well as terrify your enemies, add your wisdom to charisma checks, bully your enemies by responding to one bad guy resisting a charm or fear effect by forcing a different bad guy to save against a charm or a fear effect, or instead you could just make it more psychic damage, and your last ability lets you choose a target and become invisible visible to them and only them, preventing them from being able to see or hear you, and finally embracing your birthright of classic fey dickishness. Once again, just like the Star Druid, I don't really have anything bad to say about the subclass. Like pushing all the meaning about rangers and fey aside for a moment, this just seems like a really fun creative subclass that comes pre-packaged with its own role-playing opportunities, since the framework for this ranger seems to be less of a ranger that comes from the Feywild, and more of a ranger that guards the Feywild, both from and against any possible intruders. I really, really like that just like the Druid, the ranger is moving away from being a bog standard I am nature man and my powers are nature and also being a man and it's actually gotten a real job as the police officer of the material plane it fills a great niche both thematically and as a story opportunity for players and DMs and I can't wait to play my own ranger so that I can finally equip myself with the tools necessary in order for me to use the fey to destroy the fey but that'll about do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like, comment, ring the bell, hit that social media down in the description below, and maybe support me on Patreon so that I can afford that bribe that I paid Wizards of the Coast to throw me a softball every once in a while. But yeah, Davy out.